their constitution. Well, this would have been before. I, I know it was there in '95, but I was looking for something when I went through some documents, and the only place I found it in was was Ecuador. I'll just have to look. Our constitution right now is very very long. <laughs> we have oh, like four hundred. Oh, now I'm out. My battery's out. Okay, we'll continue. How about it? But it's very good because uh, it guarantees water as a fundamental right, for example, and also. Uh, the right to living well, this when we live, this concept. And now we have the National Development Plan, and it's that's not its name anymore, but it's the National when we live Plan. So that's what I was saying by this. This is a new way of development, not a new, an ancestral one that is being rescued because right now we have forgotten. So when that you we're have. Part. <coughs> You were making the point earlier about um, uh, wanting to have the assistance not from private, private, um, in, <coughs> not from industry, private firms, but uh, from public. You want public funds, not private funds, and that is really big in relation to to water. I mean, well, there there are some water companies going around the world that want to privatize water, and. and uh, more and more communities are buying into this notion. It's referred to as the 3P project, the <laughs> public-private partnership. Yeah, yeah. And I think they've, it's been shown, certainly in other countries. I guess this is where you can leapfrog and not have to go through the mistakes that have been done <laughs> in developed yeah, countries. It's, a lot of that is in, in our constitution. And it's, it's very broad, but also very specific on those things. And, uh, I think it defends the rights of the people, so in that sense it is really, really good. And also, I don't know what I was going to say. Oh yeah, it's a, sometimes it's like asking for assistance, you mentioned financial assistance and everything, but, and it sounds like developing countries are asking for, please give me money, it's not like that, it is commitments that... Compensation, uh, respond, it's compensation, isn't that it? That response that respond to who caused the problem and we do have to think that so it is that kind of development and um, that um, resulted in the current uh, distribution of wealth and power in the world mm -hmm. but at the same time well climate change originates from that at the same time climate change is going to affect the most vulnerable ones that are the developing countries and the most vulnerable populations. Mm -hmm. So in the end, climate change is also going, could also exacerbate the differences and the inequity in the world. So it is a problem caused by that, that resulted in the current inequity and distribution of power. And I think because of it in its impacts, it could exacerbate that. Does, does um, Ecuador have an outstanding debt? No? How do you translate that? Yes. Uh, like, do, 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 uh, do that with different countries or yes. institutions? Yes. Well, so uh, we have a that was one of the proposals I nature. suggest. Cancel the debt. Uh, make sure that the, the developed countries uh, uh, fulfill their obligation to 0.7% to, uh, of GDP, but not taking away from the development funds that should have come out of the 0.7%. Because you want additional funds yes, it, beyond it that, you don't want the okay. that fund, and then um, also to reallocate the military budget. Uh, the <laughs> uh, the um, uh, chair of the, the the chair of the G77 was uh, suggesting that it, it was very easy for. Uh, I think I'm paraphrasing it correctly. It was very easy for the U.S. to come up with billions of dollars for the wars in, in Iraq, or he, maybe he just said generally war. And so he was suggesting that the that, that U.S. should come up with uh, $200 billion, billion, and also bailing out, uh, he also pointed out uh, the, the, the ease with which the, um, the U.S. came up with money to bail out many of the companies. And so uh, it's not as though they don't, they, they can't when they... Here, which is $10 billion. Only long, Ten billion, only, yeah. Ten billion is nothing. Nothing. It's nothing in comparison Someone to. Someone compare that to sleeping pills. <laughs> it's like saying, okay, take ten million. Ten yeah, million, I forget Ten billion about is nothing. Yeah. They spent trillions 
in saving banks. And now they are not willing to do that for the whole And every world. year, the, the military budget is uh, 1.7 trillion. And uh, exactly. that. Exactly. And Come the, on. the proportion. From what of, country? Yeah. Well, no, no, not, not from what country. No, oh. but uh, the total, the total uh, military well, budget Canada, is. 12.8 billion? 12.8 billion. Yeah. And in Canada, uh, it, it's it's uh, twelve percent of the m amount of money that's available for spending in programs, and um, the the I, I think I calculated that the NATO countries spend about one point four trillion, and um, and here we're talking about people dying. Yes, and when I've gone to uh, uh, several sessions, several press conferences presented by the low the low, uh, the, the small islands, or the small, what, the small states, or the low, low See, islands. Yeah. It's so, I mean, they're, they're fighting for survival. And uh, one, there's a wonderful pre presentation by Bangladesh, and uh, then also Grenada, uh, and um, oh, had numerous low-lying low states that say, you know, you're just talking about this as, as though it's not a serious problem, but we're having, we're underwater now, and we're we're fighting for survival. And why are it, at what point do you think the countries like Canada, I mean, we're always talking about the US, but Canada's in many ways worse than the US. Uh, I mean, what, in what ways, what, uh, how, can you understand why they, they don't respond to the plight <laughs> of the people that are <laughs> fighting for survival. Peak apathy. <laughs> like peak apathy. Peak oil. Yeah, that's peak good, apathy. good. Peak We're apathy. talking about the compliance yes. with the Kyoto uh, commitments. Canada is a great example of how wh that is one of the things that the Kyoto needs to improve in, like compliance. Canada already said, okay, I'm not going to comply with what Actually, expected we from should, me. Actually, uh, we should clarify that it's not really Canada. It's the conservative government that has the support of about 37 percent, because the other three uh, three parties have um, the support of, of uh, 62 percent, and um, it's an unusual system we have in Canada that the minority can come here and speak for Canada, and in no other country. I mean, in Canada, it's supposed to be a democracy. In no other country could a party rule with such a low percentage without having to form a coalition. But in Canada, they can rule without forming a coalition. And, but do you have then um, regional initiatives, like state? Yes. Yeah. 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 So but they're not good. particularly strong either. <laughs> yeah, in the end, you have to, you have to see that here it is Canada and your leader that's right. That we have to say to we have to blame and Canada, yeah. and, 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 uh, and 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 one thing that uh, even even uh, Dr. Peshori came out personally with a statement against the tar sands in Canada. But most of the tar sands are being exploited, I believe, by by U.S. company multinational multinational country. But I always wonder if Canada dared to close the oil sands to production. Whether that would affect actually the negotiation here, because then the U.S. would have to contemplate where they were going to get oil next, and uh, where for strategic interests, where would they then go? And they feel that Canada is a friendly country at this point, and they feel quite comfortable with getting oil from Canada. But what if Canada had decided? What if Canada were wise and decided to do? What do you think the implications would be? <laughs> <laughs> Just for the Canadian <laughs> public here. <laughs> I don't know because it's not only about oil. I think it, it, it is very good, the relationship that you make with demand. Even when we talk about China, who consumes the products that are uh, produced in China. Mm -hmm. It is the world population. It, who uh, uses the forests, well, the forest products or the timber that comes out of Ecuador or of Guyana. It is other countries. So in the end, we are all responsible because it is a globalized world. 
so that's also really But who is actually benefiting? For instance, in, in Nigeria, uh, with all the oil companies there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Who, who is, I mean, often the, the people are benefiting, certainly not the Ogoni. Um, and, but they are, when you assess what the, uh, the per capita uh, consumption of CO2, it's to produce for countries outside. Yeah, so it's sort of, it's really difficult to. Hmm? 